Welcome to Impact by Diffa Dallas, the official podcast of the Dallas chapter of the Design Industries Foundation Fighting AIDS. We'll share valuable info about the fight against HIV and AIDS, what our organization is doing to assist those in our community, and most importantly, how you can help us make a real impact. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Impact. I'm your host, Shane Allen. Um, so late last year, we had a really, really interesting conversation with um, a guy called Dr. Paul Volberding. At the time, he was the director of the uh, UCSF AIDS Research Institute. Um, he actually uh, started the first outpatient, clini outpatient clinic for people living with HIV AIDS uh, back in the early 80s, probably when they, we were still calling it GRIDS. Um, and uh, the question that I had for Dr. Volberding, this renowned HIV AIDS researcher, is uh, how close are we to a cure? And his answer at the time was, we are further away than we were in February, meaning that because of all the COVID-19 research that was rightfully happening, uh, it pulled a lot of those researchers who were working on um, HIV AIDS and they were working on COVID-19 things. I was curious, now that um, there's a vaccine rollout, now that more and more people are getting vaccinated, there's, I could see this light, and I hope you can too, at the end of the tunnel. Um, now how close are we to a cure? Now that COVID is kind of, you know, not a, as big a deal, it's still something to worry about, but not as big a deal as it was late last year. Uh, and this was, by the way, one of our most popular episodes ever of impact, not only on the podcast side, but on the video side. So uh, guess who's joining us today? Dr. Paul Volberding, now Emeritus, uh, Director Emeritus of UC uh, San Francisco AIDS Research Institute. I don't say that as well as you do, but <laughs> Dr. Volberding. Call it the ARI. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, thank you for joining us again and spending some time with us. Um, we were talking offline before we started, and um, uh, congratulations on your recent retirement, much deserved. Yeah. I know you're still a very busy man, but. Still busy, right. Um, and by the way, I also, the last time we spoke, um, if you all watched the episode on YouTube or on Facebook, you see that he has this very bright blue whimsical fun background behind him so i wore this really rainbowy jacket to try to compete with it so that's what's going on here just so you know um thanks again Good for enough. joining us what's uh, how are you are you well i'm well yeah yeah um and in the process of getting my covid vaccine and uh will be happy when i get the second dose um because it's been it's it, you know it's obviously been stressful and for people of a certain age you know we mm -hmm. have to take care of ourselves and um but back to your to your point, though, I mean, I think we're still in the middle of this of this pandemic. It's it's still far from over. But but you're right. I mean, I think that since we talked last time, we, we have a vaccine. Uh, we have several vaccines and uh, that will have to be the way we stop this uh, this pandemic. How um, so, well, speaking of the covid vaccine, let's let's take a quick tangent. How was your vaccination experience? Got a sore shoulder and a little bit of a headache the second day. Um, not much. Uh, worry a little bit about the second dose because we understand that that reaction might be a little bit more vigorous. But I take it as evidence that my body is working and responding. And so I think it's a good thing. Yeah, I have a, an aunt of mine who is a, uh, a new doctor. And she got her second Pfizer vaccine and said that she got, um, you know, her arm hurt bad. And yep. she got a little bit of a fever, nothing that couldn't uh, be fixed with some some Tylenol. And after that, she was fine. But, you know, tw 12 hours of discomfort is uh, much, much better <laughs> than a, you know, a lifetime of possibly yeah. Yeah. Uh, giving yeah. getting COVID or giving it to someone that you love who, who possibly can't fight maybe it. All, so. Maybe even the worst. Yeah. Right. Right. So yeah. uh, I think it's worth talking about, certainly, as we as we continue down this path and as more and more people um, get vaccinated. So let's let's go back to this conversation, this question. Um, I guess my first question is, since the COVID vaccine rollout, vaccines, plural, rollout, right. um, have those researchers that were working on HIV AIDS, have they shifted back? Is there still COVID work being done? Where are we in the, in the, in the vein of research? 
Well, I think it varies a lot, actually. I mean, it's most of the, I think some of the basic scientists that have been working on HIV cure are still working on HIV cure, um, mm -hmm. but a lot of them are also, you know, trying to make progress against against COVID. So I think there are certainly people that, that were working full time on HIV cure that are now not. Um, also, in many parts of the country, uh, laboratory capacity, uh, staffing capacity has been reduced. I know at our institution, uh, it's only up to 25% of staffing uh, in the lab, so that slows down uh, research as well. Uh, and a lot of the clinical investigators, uh, the clinicians that, that were working on HIV and HIV cure, um, a, a number of them are just flat out totally taken up by uh, COVID response. Um, and so I think some of the some of the clinical trials are also um, are also slowed down because of this. So I, I don't think we've made a ton of progress on the cure since we talked last time. Uh, but I, I am still hopeful, as we started out by saying that the that the vaccine will eventually change things. And I think that the people that were involved are still obviously still recognize that that uh, HIV cure is a very important goal. So based on um, all of your experience and, and, and previous research and the, the way you know the COVID vaccines operate, is there anything to take from that to use in HIV and AIDS research? Well, yeah, no, I think it's very exciting. Um, the, um, the mRNA uh, technology, uh, it's not brand new. It's been... Uh, you know, developed and on the shelf. This is the first, uh, the COVID vaccine is the first major application of it. Uh, but I think the success and, and the speed with which the vaccine was able to be produced, uh, the, the great um, effect that it's had, uh, make make us hopeful again that maybe some of that technology can be applied to HIV. Um, and, you know, whether, whether we might be able to come up with an HIV vaccine or might use a strategy like this as part of an overall cure uh, approach, I think both are still possible. Uh, but I, I definitely think that that we'll, we'll learn a lot from the COVID experience that will be applied uh, to other diseases, including HIV. As we get more and more people into laboratories and, and back into research, and like you said, those laboratories were down 20, you know, 25 percent capacity um, based on kind of a vaccination rate. Um, Nothing anyone's going to hold you to, obviously. But when do you think we might get like everyone full steam ahead back into it for for HIV and AIDS research? Uh, I, I guess I'm thinking maybe towards the end of this year um, that um, you know we're still the vaccines are mostly being given to older people and frontline providers uh, still, um, and. You know, a lot of the people working in HIV are, are much younger than some of us. So uh, I think it's going to take a while for them to uh, to kind of come around to their turn with the vaccine. So I, I think given uh, given what we're seeing, I think we're going to see the, the kinks in the distribution of the vaccines worked out better. Um, and the production, I think, is going to be coming online even more vigorously. So I would think by the end of the year, we could be pretty much back to full capacity. Okay. Um, so now, you know, to... <laughs> The question that I'm, I, I think you don't like answering, but for some reason you you keep obliging us and coming on, and I appreciate <laughs> it. But you know, based on where we are, the changes, um, the trajectory, and how things are looking, um, has your answer to how close are we to a cure changed since we spoke last year, late last year? Well, well let me guess that we're a little bit closer, uh, but we're still uh, we're still not not very close. And because of the pandemic, I think we're we're not as close as we would have been had that had that not occurred. So um, I'm still optimistic. Um, I think we're learning. I think people are very interested in imaging the reservoir. You know, finding how do we see what's going on, uh, so that we can better measure the effects of treatments uh, that might be aimed for a cure. Um, so I think we're making some some progress, and it's it's going to be fun to watch. There's a. Um... I read a statistic recently that um, COVID-19 took technological advances five years beyond what they would have been. So it sped them up by five years. Is there a similar negative impact to HIV AIDS research with, with COVID-19? Did it set us back five years? Or no, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think, okay. um, I don't think so. And I think, um, again, what we're learning in covid it's the way of science. Uh, progress in one area is applied to another area. So, so we are making progress in HIV. Um, 
by the work in COVID. Um, it's not direct. It's, you know, they're very different viruses, but, um, but we're definitely still making progress. And I think that's a good thing. How, how, what are some kind of ways that I can understand in my feeble brain, um, understand how, um, COVID-19 has changed how we look at HIV AIDS vaccine research. Well, right. Well, there's a lot of, uh, of um, things happening in COVID a disease where the immune system is right smack in the middle of it. Uh, this is an, an immunological disease. And also a lot of the problems come out from, a, from the immune reaction itself against the, against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Um, so the more we understand uh, immunology, both uh, both immune deficiency and vigorous immune response, which itself could be dangerous. Um, again, those are uh, definitely in the in the wheelhouse of HIV research too. Um, Dr. Volberding, I, I really appreciate you you taking the time to come back and speak with us again. Um, by the way, you you said you're retired, but I don't. I, I would call it partial <laughs> retirement. I'm guessing you're still doing a lot of peer reviews and a lot of I'm, I'm, I'm journals and everything. Still the else. editor yep. of journals, multiple journals, things like that. Uh, exactly, exactly. Just one less thing to do. Yep. Just everything else is still going full steam ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you again. I appreciate you. Taking, oh sure. I appreciate you taking the time. And um, who knows? Maybe we'll be talking again before the end of the okay. year. Okay. Happy to do it. You. Um, you can learn more about Diffa Dallas by going to diffadallas.org. I'm Shane Allen. Until next time.